Hi and welcome back to another Rust base build. Now, just before we start the base tour, I want to let you know about a skin giveaway we're doing for the Easter skins. All you have to do is count how many of these eggs you see in the base tour, put it in the comments below, and I'll pick randomly three people today and four people from Friday's video. If you want to enter the prize for the golden egg, join the Discord, go to the giveaway section and click on the little giveaway tab. Now, jump into the base itself. I tried to make something that was very compact and had a decent starter base to start with. Now, the starter base is a little expensive, however I'm sure you could break it down even further to make it a very easy Ross starter base. Now, the costs for how I've built this base are up on the screen now. However, bear in mind you may alter and change how you actually build the base. You might not do it exactly how I do it. I've tried to keep it as symmetrical as possible, so it's very easy to follow and basically confuse raiders who may have seen this and think to go straight for the TC but you've put the TC on the other side so it gives you a 50-50 chance of potentially keeping away from having a TC taken away. Now TC is quite important in this space so I have put the unlootable TC in place so when they get it they're not going to get a lot of what's required to get in but they can get through the windows but they'll still have to work through all the sections a lot of people complain that i don't do some sort of shooting floor so this is what i've come up with you may alter it and change it not like how i've done it i'm not one for having a full-on defense floor on my base in here i've managed to do it so there's a window you can take the locker away and if you are being door raided from the top, you have a chance to defend from behind here and you can't loot your body if you drop to the ground. So I've tried to incorporate a lot of what you need to do. Now, the weakness to this base are these viewpoints because it's on a sheet metal door. If you have armoured, great. However, you can take a sheet metal door through, take out the actual stone or metal around it and go straight through the roof. But that will only take you to one loot room. Then you then have to work your way through the other loot rooms as well. And if you use the window method, like I'm going to show you in a second, you can bypass this bunker. Now, everyone loves bunkers. I'm not a big fan of them, but I'm trying to make sure I have the bunkers where I can. Having shotgun traps is essential because it slows people down. You can drain them, yes, however, they work. Now, when you get to this section, you'll notice one thing. On one side, we have the level 2 workbench, which if you watch now, if we open the windows, we jump on top of the water purifier, which is actually invisible at the minute. It's just a bug that's actually happening. You cannot go through the window. If you rotate this, you can then get through the window. So, it works if you have the TC. Now, if someone takes your TC, it becomes defunct. So, if you don't like that idea, you can use double doors instead. The get the level 3 in here does take away the ability of having two boxes down below. So, it's a choice you're going to have to make if you want to use it. But I thought I'd put it in there just to show you that it can be done. Now, getting out here can be tricky at times. I am not the best at jumping through. However, it can be quite a slog to do it. Now, obviously, you're only going to have one level two. So, on the other side, you have to bear in mind that yet you won't have that trick available unless you are willing to make a second level two bench, which a lot of people I don't think would be able to do or want to do. Now, having a lootable TC means even if they come in through the side, they have to then go through more walls to actually get to the rest of the loot. So, it adds to the raid count. Now, a lot of people ask about raid counts. And ask how many rockets etc is it all depends on how you build this base now for me i would completely armor this area some people will make it internal metal and external armored so it all depends on what type of doors you've got if you're using garage doors etc one thing to note at the back of this because you've got raised foundation you want to try and get this section as secure as possible now, by doing that, I'll show you the build as well. Just extend the actual honeycomb. This, again, will just add to it and give you a lot more protection. Now, I said this is very simple to make. Has a couple of tricks. A little bit of a bunker in it as well. We'll jump straight in now and I'll show you how it's built. 
as ever if you want the actual footprint as a picture you're more than welcome to dm me in discord and i'll try and get you as soon as possible i know a lot of people like to actually have the picture there to look around now i will try and get what i'd see as the main starter base up to show you how i would try and get this going now obviously this is quite a big starter base i'm not expecting to get all done in one go it may be something that you have to just keep going back and forwards to but i always try and get some sort of starter base in place for anyone who is actually trying to build any of the bases that i produce now very important when doing this you have to make sure you have the right foundations raised to make sure the bunker element will work if you don't do it your floor tile will just stay and you'll basically be trapped in your own base so this is what you're going to try and look for at first the raised foundation in the center of the square is a bit of an issue because it can be blown straight out but i will show you later how to protect that a bit more it is a bit of an Achilles heel at the moment, however later in the build I'll show you how to make that a lot stronger. I will also upgrade all the parts that I would personally do to high quality metal. However, I understand that not a lot of people like to armour an entire base, so it's just to give you a high end cost of what it would cost in upkeep if you were to do exactly how I did it. Personally, only the outer skin would probably have to be in high quality, the rest could be in sheet metal. It's not a big base, so you wouldn't expect it to be the strongest base. There's always going to be a clan, unless you're playing a dead server, who's got more rockets than you, who can quite easily come in. Now, as part of starter base, I've tried to incorporate as quick as I can the actual bunker in through the front door. This will slow people down in the first day if they are trying to go through all your doors straight away. It's going to force them to start taking walls and foundations and spend more, and probably, to be honest, you're not going to have a lot unless you are an absolute farmaholic. Now, very important, that metal foundation must be done first before you put the shelves in. Reason being, it will not allow you to upgrade with the shelves in place. No idea why, it's just something that helps decide to bring into the game where shelves block walls from being upgraded. I know, honestly, don't know why he's done it. Now, these lot rooms are going to be duplicates of each other. Bear in mind, if you do put the level 3 into the other loot room, you may have to destroy boxes to get it in place. I'm going to put it there as an option to show you it can be done. In both loot rooms, the actual box that's closest to the square foundation must hang out. The reason for this is so you can actually jump up onto the window and get out. If you don't do it, you're just going to get stuck jumping up and down and just cause yourself a nightmare to be honest something i had to play around with for quite a while to make sure it was right the rest of the boxes can go in as you normally would and push them to the back this box is only to aid you to get out the window that's all nothing else so make sure you push it forward again if you put the level three in you won't have to worry about that because you'll actually crawl it along the top of the level three if you don't want to put level three there i recommend you put it upstairs instead of where the locker was cover the window, just make that a wall and put the level 3 there, it just means it's more stronger in that area as well. But you will lose that defensive window. For the rest of this area, just put the boxes in as you normally would. I'm keeping the roof off the time being, just to let the light in. Obviously you'll have to crouch jump up to these positions to actually get the boxes in. Which can be annoying, but it's just part and parcel unfortunately. Now, once all that's done, I will show you... The Achilles seal of this base when it's in a very early stage but it can quite quickly become one of the stronger points later in the build. Now the main places you want to high qual straight off is the TC area leading in so if someone does take the TC from outside they can't actually get into the windows. Obviously the square foundation because it is an Achilles heel get that to 16 rockets quite quick because if that drops it will allow you into the whole base. That, as I said, is a Kelly seal for the moment. Now, when it comes to the window trick, very important that you pay attention because if you get this wrong, you will not go back in your loot room. Simple as that. Take your level 2, place it as close to the wall on the left as possible. Literally squash it until it goes red, it's just flickering. Once you've done that, put a campfire down, 
if you struggle getting through the actual window that is, put the water purifier which will go invisible just because it's broken. You'll see now you can actually get through. Rotate it and you can get through. If that workbench is a bit to the right at all, you will not get through. So it might be worth putting the window in twig before you actually do it. So if you balls it up, you can put a double door frame in instead. Because if it goes wrong, it will go wrong fast. Just bear that in mind, okay? Because it could ruin the whole build for you. And having a double doors can stop people from getting through there. So your last line of defence, open that door. They're going to have to take the doors out as well. Even if they get TC, it doesn't make a difference. If the TC is taken in this base, it will allow people through the windows. Bear that in mind. It's a cool trick to have, but it can quite quickly cost you the base if you don't get the base built up quick enough. But the way it's done, for someone to take the loot that's in the TC, they're going to have to go through the armour as well. Now, I will show you with this all armoured up how much it will cost in upkeep, because some people will want to have this full structure as armoured. I'm not going to put the top floor on, so it averages out about 80 high qual a day. Now, to some people that seems a lot. I've honestly been playing a lot of vanilla over the last three months, and 80 high qual when you're recycling, if you build near your outpost or the bandit camp, isn't actually a lot. The amount of crap you get off loads, fuses, etc., you can recycle them all the time. It's not as much. I used to always think that it was a lot until I started playing vanilla again properly and I genuinely do not feel that it is a lot anymore. It used to be, but not anymore. Now, as I said, you will do this in stages, obviously, because it is high qual and you want to get guns, especially. So bear that in mind. But if you're going to put a bit to high qual, make sure you can actually still access it before you close it up or you will lose that opportunity to do so. Now, as I said, the Achilles heel is this back position because you take the foundation out and they're into all areas. Later in the build, I'll show you how to strengthen it even more, but for the time being, put this into sheet metal. If you have the high qual, by all means, upgrade it to high qual. It's completely up to you how you do it. But you can add an all in the defense here just by putting sheet metal into the actual honeycomb itself and flatten that back piece out which I'll show you later which will add a bit more protection to it and save you wasting the high qual. The only reason that's raised is obviously so we can have the bunker. So you could possibly get rid of the bunker as well and drop that foundation down. Again it's it's up to you how you do it. So we'll jump into the next part. It's quite straightforward. Again you don't have to have all this in high qual straight away. It's just to give you a demonstration point of how to get into a bunker. Now, moving on to the rest of the build, I'm going to close this central section up. Again, just duplicate the window as you did on the first side using the fire and the water purifier to get into the window. Bear in mind though that you will not need the trick to actually get through, so your only defence is basically the bulletproof window and the metal window frame. Now, as you continue along, you have a choice. You can drop these two foundations down and have them like that but you're going to have to use half walls but I recommend that you actually keep that foundation raised but as an option I want to show it you can have it in place for this I am going to take the lower ones away and have them raised this is where your furnaces are going to go just drop them away if you want to continue how I've done it you can make more space for yourself and have more furnaces in this area if you want though if you want to do how I just shown you can have six in each side on the edges have them as metal you probably want to have all these foundations as metal reason being if someone does try to just foundation wipe the base obviously stone is a lot less people tend to just smash through bunkers if they know it's a bunker and try and take as much away as possible now i'm just going to show this in an open way of how to build obviously you have to be a bit more coy in how you do it because you'll be building a live server. To get to the TC at this point would be one sheet metal and one armoured. But after we've got that, that's all they've really got. They then have to work through the next armoured to get through. So it will cost them quite a lot to actually do it in that method. Now bear in mind if you do want to put garage doors in and have the box, you have to put the garage door in first. 
This is because of the recent update where it will not allow you to put a garage door in if a box is in place and overhanging into where the actual door would open or close. Now, these will overhang. You can put small boxes in if you want. For me, these are just boxes for charcoal, nothing major, some drop boxes for farm. It's not going to be any of my prime loot that I would use. Now, I'm just going to close this whole area down at the front just so it's quickly done because I'm always cautious of how long these build videos take. I'll just put one furnace in place just as a reminder for you what actually goes in there. But if you look at the base tour, it will show you exactly how I had it laid out. Remember to count for the eggs if you're entering the competition to win the skins for the Easter giveaway. Now at the front, I just put the stairs and the foundations here to give you an option. If you did want to put a turret in, you can set it on here. I always have a shop front so I can see if someone's outside. But also if you want to put electricity outside and have two, say, turrets in that section. So if you mean door cams, you can open it. Now moving to the actual outer honeycomb. As I said, this is a relatively small base. So it's not going to cost a lot to raid. It's a small base. People who think you can make a 100 rocket raid base for 20,000 stone, you're honestly pissing in the wind. It's it's just how it is, unfortunately. But most people, you want to try and make sure your doors are safe, hence why bunkers are in place. As I've always said, there's always a clan on the server who are going to be bigger and stronger than you, who can just plough through your base. These bases are always just a blueprint for ideas. That's all they are. It's up to you to make them your own. I say it in every single video that I do. Just use these for ideas. The footprint or some of the methods used. Don't do it like for like. Obviously the important parts you'll have to repeat. But the rest of it, try and make it your own. Change it around. Now, to get to the actual next floor, you can put a half wall which will be in twig. Put a floor piece, take the half wall away. If you want to put a turret in there, by all means do so. Some people, as I said, find it hard to get turrets. I would recommend putting single doors in place here just to stop the spread. It just reduces it slightly if people are doing rockets or using new, the new grade launchers. Because as, as I said before, you will go through phases of not having all the high qual or metal, but you may have the stone, so you're going to want to go back and upgrade over time. Now when you get to a roof, as I always say, I am not someone who defends bases. I just try and make it as strong as possible and I like to actually fight on the ground. I say fight loosely as I usually get taken out quite quick. Now up here, this is just an option. You can arrange this as you wish and have it as you would normally have some sort of defense for your base. As I said, the window is a good idea, but if you put your level 3 there, it will basically become defunct. Now, to get the little lookout post that i done, all you're going to do is put two half walls, remove the half walls at the bottom, and put a low wall in. Now, big issue with this, if you do use it, people can fire rockets in and destroy all that area and open it up. So bear that in mind, you probably want to put that into metal as quick as possible just so they have to spend more because sheet doors don't take a lot to get through and if people are using new grid launchers they quite easily shoot through there get the doors open and start plowing rockets into one area and bear in mind that your loot rooms are below these sections so it can quite quickly spread into that area however a lot of people do like to have these sort of areas so if it's something you want to use, by all means do it. If not, you can build out and flatten through with triangles and build a ledgeway instead and have these as walls and break it out. As I said, it's completely up to you how you do your defensive floor. This is just an option of how i seen it in this base as worthwhile doing. But again, just bear in mind, people can fire through those gaps. So it can be quite an Achilles heel moving forward but they will still have to go through the armoured floor to get deeper into the base. So it is still quite protected. Now, this section, if you have the gears, I would put garage doors to make it all open. Out here, again, I had the garage doors, just so if I was being attacked, I could open them up, get a good line of view, and start defending from this area as well. If you do get the turrets, put them at the front or at the sides, and as I'll show you in a second, 
put them at the back as well because we're going to create a ledge which will allow you to do so. Once that's done, all you're going to do is basically seal up all this roof space and that is pretty much the base complete. I'm not going to show you how to put doors in and everything else because it's just a waste of time. It's self-explanatory. The door frames are physically there. They're quite self-explanatory on where to put them. If you can, make all the roof metal where possible. Again, this just adds to the rocket count required. Now, moving on to that Achilles heel at the back that I did mention. You're going to want to try and expand on the honeycomb itself. And you can do it quite easily by just simply putting foundations in between the gaps that are already in place. Now, I'll show you now exactly what I mean. With all bases, foundations are going to be the kitty seal, so try and block them in as much as possible by simply just putting foundations in this section and putting walls in, this strengthens it up massively. 